I grew up in India, South India, actually in Chennai. I was born in Chennai, uh, though my family hailed from Kerala, uh, God's own country, that's what they call it. I come from a musical family, so there was music all the time at home. I probably started listening even when I was in my mother's womb. So, yeah, uh, but uh, I, l I listen to classical music mostly. So, to South Indian classical and North Indian classical. I mean, there's been music in my family for seven generations. And I, and all of them were classical musicians. And they were working, I mean, before my great, till my great grandfather, they, they were working in the king's courts, they were court musicians. So from my grandfather onwards, India, I mean India got independence and then there was there, those uh, princely uh, states were all abolished. We all came under one umbrella. So from my grandfather, we've all been performing musicians, my family. And uh, I started, my grandfather was with me and I think he must have seen some spark in me probably because he started me when I was just two and a half years old, exactly. October 1969, he started me. In my house, all we had was uh, full-size violins. So, because there were no children at home at that time, so my grandfather started me on the big instrument. Of course, he would hold it here and this, and I would sit cramped trying to hold the bow and play it, and it would be heavy. So it was about five minutes, seven minutes. That was my maximum, you know, time where I could sit and hold an instrument and play. And slowly he started building up. And by the age of seven, I was doing maybe two, three hours a day, four hours a day. See, I'm, I was a classical musician, I am a classical musician, and I will be a classical musician, Indian music. But uh, the format of Indian music uh, is improvisation. So that gave me an advantage. So wherever I went, the other fact was Indian music is not written down and Indian music is not taught, uh, Indian music is taught by listening to your teacher and then reproducing the same thing. So it meant training your ear and that became so sharp that if anybody played anything, my mind would translate them into notes. And then I would see scales, Indian scales, because in, in, in the Indian tradition, we have, there, ha, there should have been about 4,840 musical scales, which we call ragas. But right, because we never have anything documented or written down, most of them are lost. But I think right now there must be around 500, 600. So, I, 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 I know quite a bit, so I could hear, you know, different scales and then for me improvisation becomes very easy. When I hear those scales, it becomes easy. So it was in 96 when I was in Los Angeles. I was on a teaching assignment there and uh, somebody who came to learn from me, one uh, Michael Robinson, he said, ah, oh, I'd like to you to meet my friend uh, Ray Manzarek of The Doors. So I said, okay, I didn't even know who this person was. And I said, yeah, uh, why don't, okay, let's go. So then he took me and then I came and then he heard me and then he said, we just had a little jam session at, at his place. So he heard me and then he said, ah, oh, we have to do something r together and he made arrangements to, you know, uh, have a concert in Los Angeles of him and me together. 
and uh, I I had no idea who this person was nothing so I called my brother and I said have you heard of this person called Ray Manzarek so he said are you crazy what <laughs> you're asking me this question you don't know who he is I'm ashamed of you <laughs> He made me, he gave a lot of, uh, he gave me a lot of stick for that. And then, uh, then I came to know that he was this great, you know, master musician who was with the, who's the founder member of The Doors and all that. Then I started listening to their music and then slowly I started listening to jazz and this and that. And, you know, then my vision widened from just being in classical music. In Indian music, if you have a composition, the basic structure, once that is taught to you, you are allowed to improvise within a structure. That is the structure of the, it's the melodic structure and the rhythmic structure. So within that structure, you can improv, improvise and the same line can be played the same uh, composition, one of the phrases, the line of the composition, the first line of the composition, if we took that, it could be played in different, uh, with, uh, with different variations. I mean, so just one line can be sung in so many different ways. Accents can be different, you know, the feel can be different. It's like saying, uh, uh, for example, what are you doing? If you, that can be said, what are you doing? And what are you doing? You know, you can say it in different ways. So that we translate it into music. And then what are you doing? So that accent, the same thing comes into play. So the same line can be played, by, you know, you can play with it as you feel. First of all, I decided that I'm going to keep a, to a scale which is there in all forms of music. So I took the major scale. And then I said, uh, I want this to be really melodic, li like what Indian music is. There's no harmony in it, there's more of melody in it. So I wanted to bring in the key components that uh, the, is the basis of Indian music and uh, uh, the since I play like a vocalist would sing it so I wanted to bring all those uh, features into the composition and uh, and that's how I created it. I was wa uh, taking my daily walks and this, this line came in my head and then I kept humming, humming it, humming it when I was walking and by the time I came home, I felt this is the line for this piece and then, uh, and then the second, th and then it was, uh, it was very fast. I composed the whole thing probably in about, um, after I came home, maybe an hour, it was done. Through this piece, I would like uh, uh, young musicians to look at uh, when you perform, when you play something, you need to be uh, disciplined and uh, uh, disciplined to bring out perfection in your music. And then uh, there should be feeling in your music. You should feel for it. And as I said in my, uh, when I was videoing also, I said, the music changes according to how you feel at that point of time. It could be different tomorrow, it could have been different yesterday, and it will be different today. So, however you play it, each time it should be perfection personified. Yeah, and uh, you should enjoy what you do. That's all I wish to convey with this composition. 
I'm a very disciplined person. I think that's the first and foremost if you uh, want to do something with music, you know, um, a practice and then uh, I compose and I listen to a lot of music. Listening is, uh, is something which every musician should incorporate. It's just not listening to what you have done, but listen to everybody in the world because you never know you may, you may listen to somebody and you may lis like some phrase of what they have played but then it registers in your mind and then it comes out through your music giving it, giving it a very new you know the way you present it the presentation would be totally different from what you had listened but it, later on you'll realize it is that phrase that has come out in a very new way.